we're going to now look at the harmonic oscillator in terms of even and odd functions. So our wave functions are three parts, as we've seen, a normalization constant times a Hermy polynomial times a Gaussian function. So the normalization constant <clears throat> is just a constant, and constants are always going to be even functions. Similarly, the Gaussian part of this, e to the minus alpha x squared, that's the same whether you're on uh, the right side or the left side of the y-axis, so a Gaussian function is going to be an even function. But what about <clears throat> these Hermit polynomials here? Well, let's take a look at some of these polynomials and see what their values are. So h0 is just 1, so that's a constant, so that's even. h1 is to uh, whatever variable we're talking about. It could be one this alpha to one half x. Usually we talk about it in terms of this variable c. So two times c as a function of c is odd. <coughs> h2 is going to equal four c squared minus two. And that is even. We have x squared is even, constants are even, even plus even equals even. H3 equals 8c cubed minus 12c. Uh, something x cubed is is odd. x cubed times a constant is, is odd times even, which is still odd. Minus <coughs> 12 is odd times x is 12 is even times x is odd, so even times odd is odd. So we have odd minus odd, and an odd plus odd is still odd. So this is odd. And then we can start to see the pattern emerging here of what's happening. The fourth one, 16c to the fourth, minus 48c squared, plus 12, even plus even, plus even, is even. So they're alternating between even and odd. We've got even, odd, even, odd, even. Alternating as our quantum number n is changing. So if our quantum number n is even, then h of n is even. And if n is odd, then h of n is also odd. Okay, so this is just either completely even or completely odd, depending on whether the quantum number n is even or odd. <clears throat> okay, so this can be this can be very useful to us because for psi of n we have an even. Let's say let's say n is even. Then we have our normalization constant is even, h of n is even, and the Gaussian is even. So if n is even, our entire wave function is even. If n is odd, then we have normalization constant is still even, the Hermit polynomial is going to be odd, and the Gaussian is still going to be even. Odd, even times odd is odd and then odd times even is again still odd. So that's going to be odd. <clears throat> so our total wave function is going to be either completely even or completely odd depending on uh, which, which value of n we have. So this can be useful in, uh, in a couple respects. So let's say we have the normalization of n, just the, the integral of psi star psi from zero to infinity. So we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity, dx. Um, and then depending on whether n is even or odd, we're either going to have even times even. And even times even, it's going to give us an even function. So if that's even, then this integral is going to be equal to 2 times the integral from 0 to infinity, dx, of whatever this even function is. 
So whenever we're normalizing, if we were trying to, if we didn't know this normalization constant, and we were trying to figure it out. We didn't. We wouldn't have to integrate from zero from minus infinity to infinity. Maybe it would be easier to integrate from zero to infinity and multiply times two. We'll just have to see on the situation, uh, depending what that is. But what if it's odd? Well, then, in, then alternate, alternatively, we would have a wave function which is completely odd, and we would have odd times odd in here. And an odd times an odd function gives an even function. And so we would still be integrating an even function. So this relationship would still hold. So psi star psi is going to be even for every value of, of the wave function. Psi star n psi n is going to be an even function. The density is equally likely to be on the left side of the y-axis as it is on the right. Okay, then other operators. We know that the operator for position x is just multiplying times x. So that's equivalent to an odd function. So for the expectation value of x, we would have n x n. So we have the integral of and from minus infinity to infinity dx. I'm just going to get tired of writing this. Psi star is even or or odd. Let's consider both cases. X is an odd function. Then psi is either even or odd. So this is going to equal <clears throat> an odd times an odd times an odd is going to be odd. And even times an odd is odd. And then an odd times an even is again odd. So we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity with respect to x of an odd function with respect to x. And we know from the previous video that that is 0. So the expectation value of x for any value of n is going to be 0. So that's, that's useful. We'd we got to see that result and we didn't even have to do any calculus. It just naturally fell out that it was zero from the properties of even and odd functions. The operator for momentum is minus i h bar, first derivative with respect to x. And now remember that if we have d dx of an even function it's odd. If we have first derivative of an odd function, it's even. So essentially, a, a dif differentiation oper operator serves to reverse the polarity of whatever even or odd function we're looking at. So we can either have the operator act on the function and multiply it and uh, give and return the result of it being odd, or we can just view the operator itself as an odd function. Because uh, if we switch, if we switch uh, the value from even to odd, that's equivalent to multiplying an even function times an odd function. And similarly, switching an odd function from odd to even is equivalent to odd times odd will give you even. So we can just view this momentum operator as an odd function itself, in a sense, if we want to. So the expectation value of momentum is going to be integral from minus infinity to infinity, psi star momentum operator n. So that again is going to be either psi is either going to be even if we have an even value of n or it's going to be odd if we have an odd value of n. So psi star is either odd or even. The momentum operator we're viewing as odd. And then psi is either going to be the same even or odd. So this integral <coughs> Odd times odd is even, and then even times odd is odd. Even times odd is is odd, and then even times odd again is odd. So whatever we do, we're going to be integrating an odd function from 0 to infinity with respect to x. So this, again, is going to give us 0. So without doing any calculus, again, without having to actually do any integrals, we know that the average, the expectation value of momentum, the average momentum 
is zero for any state of the harmonic oscillator. Now, if we were to do, if we were to look at the value of x squared, the expectation value of x squared, that operator is x multiplying times x squared, and that's even. So that's going to have some non-zero value if you work through the same logic we have here. You're going to end up integrating an even function. And similarly, if you look at the, the operator for p squared, an odd times an odd is going to give us an even, but if we even just multiply it out, minus, h, minus ih bar squared is going to give us minus h bar squared, d dx twice gives us d squared dx squared. So momentum squared is going to be an even operator. So if we calculate the expectation value of momentum squared, we're going to get a non-zero value because by this same logic we'll end up with an even function. But even in those integrals, we don't have to do the entire integral. We can just do this trick we did up here. We can do two of the integral zero to infinity of whatever function we have. So this is how even and odd functions work in practice, how they're useful for the harmonic oscillator. So if you're doing some assignment or some test and you look up the integral for some expectation value you have and you don't see the proper integral you need, maybe the integral from minus infinity to infinity isn't there because the function you're trying to integrate is even. Maybe the only integral on your sheet is the one from zero to infinity for the same function. So keep that in mind and this will probably be very useful for you in terms of saving time and saving a lot of effort from chugging out some uh, very involved calculus.